I was taking a look at the PTC World Car Engine Assembly and I was pretty surprised to see that the components have static constraints instead of having mechanism connections and I realized it would be a good opportunity to be able to show how to do a cylinder connection. Now there's a bunch of things I have to do to lead up to using the cylinder connection but in the, if you check the description I'll have the timestamp for what you can jump to if you just want to see that portion. First off, I'm going to hide a bunch of the different components here. I use the shift key to select them and then click hide from the mini toolbar. And so you can see the crankshaft inside of the engine block. Let's go to the model display overflow and then component display style and choose no hidden. And now you can see the various components inside of there. And as I mentioned, if you take a look at the crankshaft assembly, we can see that all of the components are assembled with constraints so that they're fully constrained. Nothing can move inside of here. And another thing that I noticed is that the first component in here is called the ground component, and it's got a bunch of datums, and it's really a skeleton. So let's open up the crankshaft, and I can convert that part that was created using standard constraints into a skeleton model. And let me make sure that all my stuff is visible. Yep. And somehow they create this without any default datum planes. And so I can select it and then choose the replace command and choose by copy. And here's the option for copy as skeleton. And I showed this in the top down design tips and tricks video. If a component is at the very top of the model tree, you can do replace by copy and then copy as skeleton in order to convert it into a skeleton model. Let's rename it crankshaft skeleton. And let's hit the confirm and then click OK. And now you'll notice that that component is in the model as a skeleton. It's changed the symbol next to it in the model tree. Let me turn on the display of these different datums because I'm going to need this axis to convert a pin connection for the first component. I'm going to hop back over to the previous window because I need some reference geometry. And for that reference geometry in the engine block, let's change it back to its display. And to do that, I can go to the view manager and if I go to the style tab here it says the master style has been modified hey maybe I want to keep this let's click the save button and I'm not going to rename it but now I can go back to the master style and I want to create some reference geometry inside of the crankshaft skeleton so I will select it and then activate and now I want to create a copy geometry feature and you'll notice all of a sudden that engine block turned gray and the reason for that is someone applied some settings to this component to forbid external references being made to it. Let me show you if I go to File, Options, and then which one did I want? Assembly. Uh, if I scroll down, or actually right over here, here we have the Reference Creation and Backup Control. And we have this option check to exclude from selection references forbidden by the current settings. And for the different objects that are forbidden from selection, it turns it to this gray color. So again, that's why when I want to create a copy geometry feature, hey, it grays this out as a symbol that you cannot pick stuff from here. And to show you where that was set, let's open up the engine block in its own separate window. And if you go to File, Prepare model properties, which I like to get to be from my customized quick access toolbar. In here we have reference and backup, and there's some user defined settings. I'm going to click the change button, and for some reason, someone set this to uh, have geometry available for reference selection by other models to none. They didn't want anyone making external references to this. I'm going to change it back to all geometry and then click OK and close out of here. And let's get back to the engine window. Now when I activate the crankshaft skeleton and then create a copy geometry feature, I'm now capable of picking surfaces. And I'm going to pick the surfaces that I'm going to need later on for defining my cylinder connection for the piston. 
and I'm selecting both halves just because I like to. And let's do that again. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Let's also grab. Oops. Zoomed in a little too much. There we go. And as always, I like to rename my copy geometry features. And this is coming from the engine block. I'm not using the exact name like I usually do, but you get the idea. All right. Hit the check mark. And now I can open up the crankshaft in its own separate window and we can see the surfaces that I copied to make this easier to see. Let's go select the crankshaft skeleton then model display and I'm going to make this transparent for the skeleton. All right. All my components are fully assembled. Let me turn on my axis display. Here is an axis in that part and I can use this uh, to use a pin connection. And I will select the crankshaft, and this part should have one rotational degree of freedom, which corresponds to a pin connection. If I take a look in the placement tab, I can see that we are fully constrained. So first off, we have the axes coincident, and then we have these planes coincident over here. And then there's an angle offset, which is controlling the ability to, for this to rotate. I can right click on this angle offset constraint and then click delete. And now I am partially constrained. I really want a pin connection. This button on the ribbon will allow me to convert the this partially constrained component to the corresponding mechanism connection. I'll click on it and realize it's, oh wait, there's one rotational degree of freedom. This should be a pin connection. And in that way, I hit the check mark and you'll notice next to this in the model tree, let me use my zoom function, now it has that symbol that looks like a box with a dot inside of it. That indicates that we have a pin connection. Now for the connecting rods, if you take a look at them in here, they're now showing up with, let me zoom in again, with a double box, meaning that they are assembled to an under constrained component. So I can go through, let me turn off my magnifier, and edit the definition of this component. And I can see that, let's see, we have a coincident constraint. I can see the axes being highlighted. And we have a distance constraint that offsets it from some plane on the crankshaft. And then we have this coincident constraint, which aligns a point with this datum plane. Just like before, I'm going to delete that extra constraint. Now allow assumptions is checked so I can uncheck it and like before hit this button and it converts it to a pin connection. So now this has one rotational degree of freedom and later on I'm going to edit definition of the actual pistons in order to constrain the movement of the connecting rods inside of the engine block. Let's hit the check mark. Now Unfortunately, I have to repeat this seven more times for the other connecting rods. So I'm going to put an edit in the video here and come back and you'll see that we'll have mechanism connections for all of these. All right, that was a little tedious, but I now have pin connections for all of the connecting rods. You can see that mechanism connection glyph next to the components in the model tree. Now to take care of the pistons. And for the piston, let me edit definition. And in this particular case, again, we are fully constrained. I'm going to get rid of all of these constraints. I'm going to delete, delete, and delete. And now I'm going to put in my cylinder connection. And for my first cylinder connection, I'm going to pick this surface that I selected and this surface from the piston part. And a cylinder connection uh, only requires you to pick two axes or two cylindrical surfaces. And you can see from the available degrees of freedom that it allows translation and rotation. I'm just translating to get it away from the connecting rod. In order to connect these two components, I can use a second cylinder connection. So from the placement tab, I will click New Set. And for the axis alignment, I'm going to use query, oops, there, I think I got it. Query select to get to the connecting rod surface, and then 
select the surface from the piston pin and now they are connected in here and I can hit the check mark and just like before I'm going to repeat that process for the other pistons which have now failed and get them connected and again I'll put an edit in the video and we'll come back when these are all fixed alright so now I have all my double pairs of cylinder connections for the piston assemblies let's click on the drag icon and I'm going to click on the crankshaft and here you can see that yay it is working we can see that the motion is valid and getting exactly the way that we want it to and so let's click the close button and if I want to create a kinematic analysis inside of here I'll click on applications and then mechanism and I'm going to look I have so many connections visible on the computer screen let's go to the connections and then expand joints and the first one I put in here should be my pin connection and I can see where it is in here now let's select it and from the mini toolbar I can choose to create a servo motor and I'm going to define angular velocity and for the profile let's make this really slow constant velocity of 90 degrees per second and then hit the check mark to create my motor let's collapse all of this and now I can click on analyses and actually before I do that I can see that my glyphs are really cluttering up the screen so I can click on the mechanism display icon and turn off the display of my joints and then click OK a lot less screen clutter turn off my axes while I'm at it and let's create an analysis click on analyses and then the new icon from the mini toolbar and I'm gonna leave the name the same for the type I'm gonna change to the kinematic solver and to get four rotations out of here let's run it for 16 seconds and to make a nice frame rate let's change that to 100 and I'll use the initial current configuration for the motors I'll have my motor running the entire time this is good now I can click the run button and it is calculating and it is calculating very slowly so I'm gonna let this run and put in a small edit and then we'll come back alright I'm back the run has just completed so I can click the OK button and let's hide the skeleton and we can go expand playbacks and click on the analysis definition that I just created the processing is complete so here I have the animate dialog box and we can hit the play button crank up the speed and our crankshaft connecting rods and pistons are not moving the way that I had expected let's hit the stop button just want to point out you can use the capture button in order to make an MPEG movie and this even allows you to photo render but I'm not going to create that let's hit the cancel button and then close and we could even go back to the next higher level assembly the engine and go back to our view manager and from the style tab reactivate that style hit the close button and applications mechanism and again here we have our motor that's defined at the lower level we could repeat the analysis and create it at the engine level as well I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolewindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.